Hello, good people. Long time no see, right? Okay, so what everyone has been waiting for. This video, I will be talking about <clears throat> my experience with Letrozole versus first round of Clomid. Um, before I get started, I will say um, the first round of Clomid we did last month, which was January 2022. Um, I ended up being six days late for my period. Um, the day I expected my period, I took a first response and got the brightest positive I've ever gotten. Um, and obviously it didn't, um, pan out the way that we were praying for. I don't know what that is y'all. Sorry. Um, but it is what it is. Um, this is where we're at. It's part of our journey and I'm just taking it day at a time. Um, so yeah, um, ended up being six days late in for my February period, um, which along with the positive we thought was a good sign, but it wasn't. Um, but that's okay. I'm okay. So, Letrozole versus Clomid. If you were like me, you had no clue what the difference is between the two. I went to Google. I went to Facebook groups, all that, trying to get all the good information before I even started Letrozole. Um, and sorry for these bags. I have not been sleeping very well. Uh, anywho, um, so letrozole for me, I didn't have any symptoms. Um, the first, the very first time I took it, the first day I got very sick to my stomach. That was it. That's the only side effect I ever had. Um, I didn't have anything else. No night sweats, headaches, problem sleeping, nothing like that. Um, I did notice that I had intense ovulation pains, which I've never had before. Um, letrozole did cause me to have intense labor pains to the point where I could feel it. Um, and I could tell which side, like it was intense, intense. Um, but yeah, letrozole was easy. Um, I only took one tablet a day, um, whether it was the 2.5 milligrams or five milligrams, I only took one a day. Um, so, I mean, I don't really have any negative things for letrozole other than it obviously didn't work for me. Um, but yeah, so that was letrozole. Clomid, um, I noticed, which keep in mind, if you haven't watched my last video about Clomid, I did end up catching Rona um, on day two or three. Um, and so some of those symptoms, I don't want to say were because of Clomid because it very well could have been because I was actually sick. Um, but with Clomid, before I actually got my positive, um, I had the, the first day I did not have anything. I was fine. Um, I'm trying to remember. Y'all might have to go back and watch that video. I'll link it um, where I talk about each day of Clomid and how it went. Um, but the main thing I remember was a headache. But again, I had a very intense headache once I, like, on that, let's see, Wednesday is when I got sick. And Tuesday night is when my headache started. So it very well could have been not Clomid at all. So that's why I say I might have to redo this video next month after this round. So that way I kind of know for sure, like, yes, this was. Um, but I, I can't really fairly compare, I guess, because once, like from that Wednesday on, I was knocked out. Like I slept basically all day, every day. Um, I did feel sick. I did. I felt like I had a really bad head cold, but most of that due to Miss Rona. Um, so there's that. Um, but as I stated before, 
the first round of Clomid um, was not successful for us. Um, as far as like ovulation pain, I didn't feel any. Um, and also I was using the clear blue digital ovulation tracker and I kept getting the blinking smiley face. I never got the static um, full non-blinking smiley face. So I don't know if I actually ovulated, which, which, oops, I feel like I did because I would have had to ovulate to get a positive pregnancy test. So maybe I just didn't have the pains that letrozole caused. I don't know. Um, but that's that. I am on my second round of Clomid, 100 milligrams a day. It's 50 milligrams twice a day. Um, and that's why I said these bags under my eyes, I have not been able to sleep. Um, I've been waking up at two, three o'clock in the morning, staying up for like anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour before I can go back to sleep. So that's the main thing I'm noticing. I haven't had any headaches, hot flashes, nausea, anything like that this time, just not being able to sleep. Um, I am on day four, nope, five, hmm, what's today? Today is Thursday the 17th, so, y'all, I don't even know, I think I'm on day four right now, um, so I feel like if I were gonna have symptoms, I would have already had them, but so far, just not being able to sleep is the only thing. And if y'all know me, I like sleeping. So hopefully once I'm done, I can get some sleep and hopefully this will be my month. But another update. So I reached out to that doctor and I go there to meet with them March 24th at 1030. So I'll do a whole video on that experience and see what they say. Um, I'm just ready to get some answers because I've not ever, like with all these medicines that I've taken, I've never gotten like baseline blood work done, like mid-cycle blood work done, in-cycle blood work done. And I'm like, I'm looking, the more research I'm doing, which do your research before you get your procedure, saves time. Um, but the more research I'm doing now, I'm realizing like a lot of doctors, when they put you on these medicines, like to have your baseline so they can see exactly what's going on with your body. I'm not getting that. I don't feel like I'm getting what I need to get. So I'm looking at other options as far as doctors and treatment for who has my best interest. Um, and the end result that me and my husband want, obviously, is a child. So that's where we're at. All right. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, in the comments below, go ahead, leave it for me. I will reply back. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, be blessed, be happy, and stay beautiful.